Okay, this is uh, chapter 27. Avenge the Revenge of the book God Dictated to Me that he titled, had me type, um, Isaiah 53 and the Day of the Lord. And how important Isaiah 53 is for the Day of the Lord, which is this day. It's easy to find. You got to put four books together. Uh, Isaiah, Jeremiah in particular, Ezekiel, and Malachi 3. That's where he announces the Day of the Lord. Uh, in addition to him dictating the Torah to Moses, as believed by uh, Orthodox uh, Judaism, and I think primarily for the reason that he simply couldn't have that kind of knowledge to put together, you know, Genesis, Numbers, Deuteronomy, etc. And what the rabbis don't know, you know, and uh, Orthodox Judaism is that he actually dictated the entirety of the Hebrew Bible to one man or another, in particular the prophets. Each prophet was commanded and directed by God to write their respective books. And some of them may have been uh, responsible for the writings, such as Chronicles and... Um, What's that? Yeah, well, I'm the righteous servant Moshiach, prophet like Moses. He's been with me 16 years. And if you've been watching these videos, you've learned what all that's about. The five refinement in Isaiah 53 that you can also find in Jonah, uh, Job, and Ezekiel in particular. Ezekiel is the key to understanding 53. And as I said, he dictated this book that I'm doing these chapters from to me at his command and direction. And we're redoing This is the third time we've gone through this book. We've had it out there for, well, since COVID started. And I guess that's almost three years ago now when it started. Uh, I couldn't know the information of this book. There's no rabbi today or in any day in the history of Judaism, including the sages and any theology of the Hebrew Bible, who has this information, who has understood the Hebrew Bible as this book clearly shows. And it's, and it's God's book. So this book is to explain the Hebrew Bible. I mean, the, the parts that nobody's gotten to. He doesn't have any problems. He's happy with how uh, the Jewish people have have done with the Torah. And we hardly study it. I know uh, Rambam said Moshiach will study Torah day and night. That's just simply not true. Mostly the, the books of the prophets, but there's things on heaven that only Elijah would know that are in this book and that he talked to me before we typed it, before he had me type it. You know, there's four righteous servants to come. It would be Elijah, the prophet of like Moses, Moshiach, and the man actually described in Isaiah 53. God came to me at birth and orchestrated my life to be sure I fit the verses of Isaiah 53. A life of pain, suffering, grievous injuries, familiar with disease and crushed with disease. But he didn't reveal himself to me until I was 50 years old. <laughs> Seven. Okay, no. Okay, let's get started on this. This is the first one I've done today. It's early in the morning. So I, I'm, I'm going kind of slow. Avenge the revenge. Okay, here's Malachi chapter 3, verse 1. Behold, I send my angel 
This is from Rashi's book. The JTS, which God says is the best translation of Hebrew to English on the Hebrew Bible, doesn't say, Behold, I send my angel. It says my messenger. And as I understand the words, it can be kind of interchangeable. But in any event, and he will clear the way before me. And suddenly, the Lord whom you seek will come to his temple. And behold, the angel of the covenant whom you desire is coming, says the Lord of hosts. This is from the Shabbat organization that particular quote, because I got Rashi's commentary, and they, they have Rashi's commentary. And uh, it's in Hebrew and in English. Rashi's commentary, Midrash form, where you take a verse, and you break it down, and you comment on the different parts. Here's Rashi. And the angel of the covenant, commentary, who avenges the revenge of the covenant, Rossi's <laughs> the covenant that you desire, well, there's only two covenants to be delivered in the day of the Lord to fulfill the prophecies of God's Bible. There's six. Four righteous servants return, as I mentioned, are come, and two covenants to be delivered. Both are being delivered by me as the prophet like Moses. And, of course, what's unique about Moses is that God dictated the Torah to him. He dictated this to me, just like the prophet like Moses. Uh, but anyway, uh, the covenant that you desire has to be the one in Jeremiah 31 where God will place Torah on your hearts. Everybody shall heed him for because he, will for, he forgives the sins and iniquities of the Jewish people and remembers them no more. It's a repeat story. He did this for the 13 tribes that returned from exile. And yes, it was all 13 tribes. If you read Ezra, he even tells you they gathered as one man. And that was to build the second temple. And God, when they were coming back to the promised land, God forgave their sins. And he told them, it's not that you deserve it. And he doesn't say it's to be a holy seed and build a second temple, but that's what it was about. And that's what it's about again. He wants to, re that's what Malachi, Malachi 3 says, I'm going to return to my temple. He knows it's not there. That's clear in the other covenant, the covenant of friendship, which, by the way, completely refutes the Messianic error if everybody's waiting on that because Moshiach's here. Well, that's me. I'm Moshiach, and there is no Messianic error. That primarily comes from Rambam, and it may stem somewhat from, or began, with some of the prophets, seven of them, discussing the day of the Lord. But anyway, there's, like, there's videos on that and chapters. I'm going to carry on. This is a short chapter. I'm going to get it done pretty quick. Rashi's interpretation is that the covenant of the angel has been revealed, revenged, and the angel avenges, avenges that revenge. No mention of the covenant of sin forgiveness. The covenant is not described, nor is there an explanation to how this covenant was revenged, or how the angel, who is uh, the angel of God's presence, who's also here with me, God and the angel, who is a person. It's the Holy Spirit. God created an angel, the first person he created. And uh, for his body, he did not give him human form and wings. His body is the Spirit of God. So he's the angel of God's presence and the Holy Spirit, which makes sense. I mean, God's always in his spirit. And you can find that in Ezekiel, and you can find that in the Torah, in the Exodus. Um, but anytime God's power is uh, uh, shown or he's speaking, any reference to an angel or spirit 
It's the angel of his presence, the Holy Spirit. God is still one. He created this angel. But he's in that angel. And they're always together. Or how the angel avenges the revenge. There are only two specific covenants of the scriptures that have not been delivered in this uh, in the time of Rashi and until this day. The covenant of friendship and the new covenant with sin for forgiveness of Jeremiah 31. Covenant of friendship can be plant found in two places in the book of Ezekiel. In Malachi chapter 3 verse 1, the covenant is described as the covenant that you desire. This is either the new covenant with sin forgiveness or the covenant of friendship and they are delivered at the same time. The covenant of friendship comes with the anointed one, David, Moshe, from Ezekiel 34, and I believe 37. And the new covenant with sin forgiveness from Jeremiah 31 is delivered by the messenger of Elijah. And they are the same man, as I previously discussed. That's me. And they're in this book. And God says they become effective when the books are published. And, you know, it's so different. There's so much information that Jewish publishers, and we need a major one. This book's got to be marketed throughout the world. Um, and in some, in, in some ways, because of the things they don't know, it almost looks like an attack on Judaism. It's not. It's just, you know, God has the top ten of the fallacies and false teachings of Judaism that he wants straightened out. And there's a lot of other information on here. Like I said, information on heaven, how he created the angel of the Lord, how he created Adam. Lots of information. And 50 chapters, and I, I have previously already put them on video on YouTube, but he has me repost them all the time. Keep them out there. Every time you repost it, 10 stamps go out to various places in the world uh, just showing the video trying to get somebody's interest and um, but they show the wear and tear after a while it gets to where I just in some of the old ones I just faded out the picture just about and the words weren't matching my lips and we redid them just two or three weeks ago but we're redoing them again because they've already been reposted about eight or nine times and starting to show a little bit of wear and tear. I've seen a couple that are, I, I get, I'd have deleted them, but God said no. God has never made a covenant of revenge with the Jewish people. God removes his wrath from the Jewish people and passes it to Christianity and Gentiles in general as a revenge, but it is not a covenant for taking their book and calling it their own and attaching it to the New Testament, telling the Jewish people it was prophetic of Jesus, and that they just didn't know how to read it. He's going to give his vindication for that. This is Isaiah 51, verses 22 and 23. Thus said the Lord, your Lord, your God who champions the people, herewith I take from your hand the cup of reeling, the bowl, the cup of my wrath. You shall not drink it again. I will put it in the hands of your tormentors who have commanded you, get down, that we may walk all over you, so that you made your back like the ground, like a street for passerby. Christianity, Islam, and Gentiles in general. Okay, next chapter. So that was a short one, uh, which is why I was talking so much in the beginning. Uh, and this might be the first video somebody sees. So that's a lot of information to put in in 10 minutes or so. Next up is chapter 28, entitled Ezekiel. And again, the book of Ezekiel is the key to Isaiah 53. But if you look, we, we've done a lot on 53 in chapters 21, especially 22, 
23 and 24. And uh, those are must-watch videos if you want to learn about Isaiah 53 and who I am and what it's all about. 53 has never been properly explained. It's not Israel, cannot be Jesus. The scribes, a Gentile. And that's from the scripture. God comes from Adam, Gentile lands, lands of Christianity. And with him, there, and none of the Jewish people are with him. But he's got to have a representation and a prophet like Moses, or you won't know he's here. God covers the earth, and so does his spirit. I mean, he's everywhere. But you can't know where his presence is, which he tells me is likened to his mind. It's what will enter the temple when we get it built. I remember, I'm supposed to clear the way. I'm also Elijah, the messenger. And my, I'm the messenger of the new covenant. Actually, both covenants. But, um, I forgot where I was. God said, it's no surprise. He controls my thoughts, my words, my actual body, my emotions. His power surrounds me. In Ezekiel, you'll find uh, the, he's always talking about the, the cords of God's power. Well, with me, I, I don't think of him as cords. His power simply envelops me. Uh, and believe me, he lets me know and his presence is heavy. I don't just hear his words. And again, I couldn't have this knowledge. And add to that, he orchestrated my life. Okay, and didn't reveal himself till I was 50. And, uh, what? <laughs> he just told me to wrap it up. You can find other videos on what I'm talking about.